All right, I'm about to blow your minds. When you hear the name Thomas Edison, you usually think of the light bulb, electricity, or audio recording. But Edison's patent on a puncturing pen has turned him into the titan of tats and the Earl of Ink. Sometimes a new idea doesn't quite work. It needs a dose of iteration before it can become a true innovation. Even for a genius like Edison, who held over a thousand patents, not everything he touched turned to gold. The Henry Ford Museum of American Innovation's Kristen Gallerno walked with me to Greenfield Village to see the Edison invention that sparked the imagination of others to find its true innovative purpose. So what is this place? So this was Edison's office for Menlo Park. And this is where he did a lot of his administrative work. And what did he write with? <laughs> one of the things that he wrote with is an electric pen. The electric pen was actually one of the first experiments at Menlo Park in 1876, and it was also their first product. What is a, an electric pen? Is it a pen that you have to plug in that can be really cumbersome? Sort of. Actually, this artifact right here is a, a wet cell battery. And then these are actually the electric pens themselves. So they're sort of like a metal stylus with a needle. So you would hook this up to that battery? Mm -hmm. And then you would draw or write on a piece of paper as you normally would, and it would put little tiny puncture holes into the piece of paper. As you're scripting, say, a letter, it's actually just making little exactly. holes along the way? Yeah. It's like making, a jackhammer? Yeah, like a stencil jackhammer, <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. What was the point? Why not just use a regular pen? Well, along with the Industrial Revolution, you have an explosion of information. One thing you needed to do to organize your information was to have a lot of duplicates, so copies of things. And was it easier to copy using an electric pen? Yeah, you could make thousands of copies on this press. The electric pen was separate from the copy press. Once the pen made the holes, the paper was placed on a metal plate in the press. The paper would be inked, and then a roller would be used to press the ink through the holes to make a copy of the original onto another sheet of paper. So the pen itself is not depositing any no, ink. No, no. The pen itself is simply making holes. Exactly. And this really is the forerunner of a photocopier. Edison's electric pen wasn't a big seller, so he licensed his patent to Albert Blake Dick, who used the stencil idea to create his own flatbed duplicator box, which he called the mimeograph. It didn't take long to mechanize it, and the mimeograph became the standard office copying machine well into the 20th century. Okay, I'm looking for my ninth grade algebra <laughs> problem set from Mr. Ott. <laughs> so the mimeograph is one way to go. Maybe a more surprising way to go is the history of electric tattooing. A lot of the tattoo guns that are being used, they all have their roots in Edison's electric pen. Are they puncturing holes in the skin? They are. That's exactly what's happening. The thing with tattoo guns is that it actually is depositing some ink at the same time. So what a tattoo gun does is it combines roughly this device with the actual ink yes. depositor. Exactly. It's basically a tattoo gun. It's got an added ink reservoir on it, and then it, you can do things like adjust how fast the needle is moving. So it's much friendlier to tattoo artists to use as an instrument. Edison is alive still. <laughs> is he aware of how his invention is being used? Yeah, he would have been alive, but did you know that Edison may have had a tattoo? It was like a series of five dots, and nobody really knows what it means. I was hoping that it would be a little light bulb, or at least yeah. a Lightning bolt. Right. Portrait of Tesla. A portrait. Oh, a Tesla with an X through it. Yeah. Right? Tesla being struck by a lightning bolt. Yes. 